Hi everybody, it's Lisa with Junk Journal Gems. Thank you for joining me today. I want to also thank the new folks who have um, subscribed to my channel. Welcome and welcome back to others who have been following me for a little while now. I'm back to working on, remember way, way back? <laughs> Probably more toward... Oh, February of this year, I had been working on this travel-themed junk journal using a kit of ephemera that my brother gifted me at Christmas. That is the coolest kit. It is ephemera from a couple in the 50s who traveled to various countries through Europe. Um, so they went to places like England, France, um, Austria and some others as well. Switzerland was in there. Um, so if you want to take a look, I did make those ephemera pieces into digi kits that are available on my Etsy. So you're welcome to hop out there and see if there's something you like. I separated the kits, I believe, yes, out by countries in case someone just wanted Italy, for example. But I, w I got to a point with this between COVID and I had been sick and my father passing away where I just, I lost my mojo with this journal and I happened to stumble on another YouTuber that I'd never seen before. She's probably not new to the rest of you, but I believe she pronounces the name of her channel as Shinooki. Her name is Shanna. And she just sparked my creativity again and was exactly the oomph that I needed to get going again. Um, she has this marvelous layered, I call it a layered mixed media um, style to the things that she does. And it it's just, it's just what this journal needed and it's just kind of the creativity that... I needed to give me another little jump start after my latest nature journal. So I thought I'd turn the camera on and show you what I've been doing with this journal. I've been doing some paint splotches. I've been putting some, um, this ex actually is um, texture paste here that then I put just a little bit of vintage photo on top of so it makes it pop off the page a little. And let's see, here's some more that I did. I'm just starting with my first layers of putting paint down. Some pages I'm putting, just taking my uh, card and putting a little bit of gesso. I just use the Artist Loft brand um, on top because I just wanted this to have more of a travel texture feel to it. So this is my first layer. This one I had a little burst of thought and went ahead and used some of these papers, paper pads that you can get from the Dollar Tree, crunched it up, put a, rubbed a little vintage photo on it, um, some paint on it, and glued it down along with a doily, along with, um, I've discovered spray adhesive. And when you're trying to put down doilies and some of these other things it's it's been working out fantastically and it's so much faster than futzing around with or glitter glue or something so yeah I'm just going through putting some texture down and I'll come back after time and put on more layers um, here's some more um, gesso with I think I used the rusty hinge um, distress ink on that one so that's what I'm doing and I thought what the heck? I'll just turn the camera on and bring you along as I continue to work through this and we'll just have a little messy fun. It is incredibly hot here today. I'm in Wisconsin and whew, we're expecting storms a little bit later. So this is the second signature that I'm working on here. Make sure I'm in frame for you. And I'm just plotting along. Here's another layered piece. I've got some tea bag here, some paint behind that, a little snippet of fabric. 
I don't even know what this doodad it is. It's a it was in a little button box that I had gotten at a I don't know a thrift store or a flea market or where I picked that up, but it says Opa One Red Point. I don't know what it is. So if somebody knows, let me know. A little piece of map in here. And some tickets. I aged this piece up and did a little bit of um, gesso through a stencil. So, yeah, I'm just going through and playing and having fun. I'm, this is kind of a ball. The paints that I'm using, I just blob them on. Uh, this is a styrofoam plate. The paints that I'm using are the Art Artist Loft brand. I'm using, I do not know how to pronounce this properly. It's thalo blue and thalo green. The thalo green is kind of a, it's more of a deep teal, I would call it. Um, the thalo blue is kind of like a royal blue. And then I just have out the vermilion and deep red in case I get to another signature and I want to pull out those paints. So that's where I'm at with that. So let's just get to plopping down some color. Sometimes I get a little messy, so I'm going to get out a little wax paper here just because I, I know myself. <laughs> All right. So let's just play. I just lightly dab it in here. I'm just checking to see that you can see. And then this blue is kind of bright. I could tone it down, but I'm just going to come in and barely pick up a little green. And then I just want to dry brush it until I get something that I like. So I like that. You're going to say, well, Lisa, that was nothing big. No, nope, I'm just looking for a little color. Maybe we'll put a little on the edge here. Yeah, I like that. I'm not looking for neat and clean. I'm actually looking for messy. So here, you know what? With this rosy pink color, I might pick up a, a little bit. Let's clean off the brush here. And then sometimes I come in and just do a little bit of dabby-dabby. This one over here. So I hope you're all having a good day, a good weekend. I'm filming this on Sunday afternoon. Yesterday was also hot here, so well, our youngest son was at work. My husband and I took a little dip in the pool, cool off a little bit, got some housework done. Okay, so that's turned out a little bit bright, not to fear. What we can do, because I'm not looking for something quite that bright. So I just come in and I get my trusty gesso and I start toning it down a little. See, isn't that fun? And just brings it down. And then later, late, <laughs> later, I'll come back in and I will um, put some layers on that to give it even more interest. I just love this project. I've been having so much fun with it. Okay, so let's go back to this one. I'll probably age around the outside of it. But let's see, this guy will be like this and this will be like that. So I like the blue in there. But I think what I will also do, let's try a little of this deep red and see how that looks. Can you see what I'm doing here? Only need a little dab, a little dab will do ya. Get some of this off. 
you can tell I'm not I'm not being picky yes I love that okay I want to get more of a point I'm getting a little more purple than I do want. I'm going to have to resort to cleaning. Oh my. I always keep, because my crafting space is in our family room, I always keep a jug of water in here. So whenever I need water, just pour it in my little paint cup. And then... This is what I use my white papers of the napkins from decoupage for. Cleaning off my br brushes and such. Here we go. We're going to be able to get what we're looking for here now. Yeah. There. Sorry if I bumped you. I like that. So then when we put it up against our page here, like that. Okay, we'll put more layers on later. Um, we'll ink this later. I'm not going to put you through this. All I've been using for inking throughout the whole thing is vintage photo and rusty hinge. So I'll just show you if it, those of you who might not have Rusty Hinge, that's what this is. And I just come in and have a play with that. And all it's doing is it's bringing out that Rusty Hinge color that was already on the page. And that's bit of a different look. While we're talking here, I have some um, little metal tag. You know those tags that have a metal circle and a ring, but it's got paper on the inside of the circle? I've got some of those in a bath of vinegar and salt and hydrogen peroxide to get them a little rusty. Talking about rusty. So I've got that going. This is going to be a crafty afternoon for me. There. Love it. Let's give it a little more. I'm also finding that I'm finding my style is definitely on the grungy side. Isn't that fun? This is in one of the ephemera pages. And some, a photo here. Fun. Pack your bags. Going on a trip. Okay. Do I want to do anything on this one? Hmm. Maybe we'll do a little stenciling. I like these dots and I like them on top of the coffee dye so let's do a little more of that and I don't want to do a whole bunch because you still want to be able to write on the page but I just like that little pop of gesso this will be fun to put it over this doily area. This way. I think I am going to sell this journal. At first I thought I would keep it. But I have so many journals stacked up right now that... I have to get to that there's only so much writing I can do at a time. So 
Maybe I'll sell this one. I'm going to set this one aside so it can dry. And then what I'll probably come back and do later is to come back with some of that reddish color and do a little bit of dry brush on it. All right, so that's it for that signature. So that's signature number two. Here is signature number three. This has just got some fabric on here with eyelet. So pretty. And we'll come back and age that a little bit more. This has a postcard. Or yeah, it's a postcard with art on it. Tag. French Alps page. This is screaming for something, isn't it? It's screaming. Saying, do something with me, please. Okay. So I think what we will do first, just so I can see, is I'm going to come in here and do a little distressing. Cosmetic brush. Get a little ageness color to this I've almost gotten to the point where it's like god forbid something be white <laughs> is anybody else like that I think addiction to distress ink is a real thing maybe Tim Holtz needs to Start an Inkers Anonymous group. The 12 steps to de-inking your life. <laughs> the first step is admitting you have an inking problem. Lovely. Okay, that brings it down so I feel like I've got something my speed to work with. And then I'm going to take some, the page it sits next to, or right after, maybe I want to say, is this one. So I'm going to come in and get some of that teal. This is a little red, so I'm not worried that I still have some of that red in here. And I just bring it down. Give it a little color. Lovely. Come back in, put a little more red in. The wonderful thing about working with acrylic paints is if you feel you get too much, go for another paint and pull it in. Wash your brush off and Bring something else in. Go over it with gesso. Um, sometimes I just have to get over my anxiety of, oh my God, it's not perfect. And that's been the beautiful thing about this hobby for me is to kind of get away from feeling like everything has to be this, I don't know, whatever I deem perfect at the moment. I love this. Okay, that's just the right amount of color I wanted. Because see, now it just doesn't pop off as looking so white. Oh, yummy. Okay, so I think you all get the, the gist of what I'm doing. I'm going to keep working. And I will bring you back as I start to put in some more layers to the pages that I've been working on. Thank you so much for joining me, and if you like, subscribe, hit the like button, and join me next time.